Coaches were saying, oh, she's too big to run the 800, mm -hmm. isn't she? Oh, she'll never break 203. She'll never break two minutes. And I, by these times, I was running 159, like water mm -hmm. running out of the tap. That's something that I really do rate about athletes, is that you actually have to know yourself. Everyone in their own field, you need to know yourself to be able to get the best results. The, the <laughs> etymology of the word of happiness, the rise of the word, happens, mm -hmm. which is a present tense thing. Yeah. So when people feel happy, they feel happy in the moment. I don't really understand like where all this negativity has come from, but all I can do is let my running do the talking. Do you want help? <laughs> no. Do you help? Parachute. Oh, Someone has to on. give me the parachute. <laughs> Click me. They're clicking me. You're giving people the parachute. <laughs> I'm a speaker too. That's you know what I mean. I'm I was very blessed to have a mindset that I'm about more than just medals. Mm. If I put all of my everything on a medal or a time, I'm going to be disappointed a lot yeah. because you lose so much more than you win. It's that time of the week. It's that time of the day. It's purpose led mm. time. So you know that we are here to stay, mm. as we like to do. Do you know mm. what we like to do, bro? The introductions of introductions. Yes. But before we get to that too, hello. Oh, wow. My name is Coach Klutze. I'm a public speaking coach. I'm a speaker and I'm a project manager. And it's a pleasure to meet you guys today. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> nice to meet you once again. And a lot of you know me, but if you don't know me, you'll know me today. Kabod. I run a podcast and personal branding agency. Yes, sir. That's what I do full time. Yeah. And I also do a little something, something with my brother. Kabod. You're watching it right now. It's called yeah. Purpose Led. We That's do events. It, we do podcasts. We do it all, man. Come on, and we're going to be doing even more this year. Yes. Keep big, your eyes peeled. Big, big plans this year. Big, big plans. But without further ado, mm. so this person here, she's an athlete, a former athlete. Oh, wow. In fact, so she was a, she was a peak of the peaks. Mm. Went to Olympics, actually got a bronze medal. Oh, wow. I've never done that. I've never done that. Never. Bronze medal. Yeah. Crazy. She is a mentor. She's a speaker. She's a businesswoman mm. and also sits of the board members for Athletics of UK. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. She oh, look man. at me, she's nodding. Yes. So I know I got correct. She's not even reading notes. No notes. No notes detected. Straight from the brain. Uh. But without further ado, guys, please help us welcome Miss Marilyn. How are you doing? Oh, no man wrote. Oh, thank you, my bros. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, Coro, no man wrote. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I'm very blessed to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank I'm you so, so much. For the conversation we're about to get into. It's going to be a big one today. It's going to be a big one. Do you know what's actually so mad? Mm. For me personally, because I, I love athletics, I'm a big I'm a big fan of athletics in general, sports, because for me, they're the peak of the peaks. So I like to use those skill sets in my life. What do, you mean, what do you mean by peak of the peaks? So they've reached a, like the pinnacle of their field, sport, mm. whether it be sports, whether it be athletics, whether it be basketball, you guys have reached the peak. So I've always been, from early, I've always been gravitated to it. Athletics, Olympics, I'm always watching it. World, of, world, world of athletics and world championships, always watching it. Because I'm like, there's something about them which I like. And I realise now, upon reflection, is the fact you guys are the best of the best. I like that. For me, it's an attractive thing to see people who, who, who are the best of the best. Mm. I love it. So I say all that to say, yeah, I remember watching the Athletics, uh, the Olympics with my sister, 2008. Mm. And figure about it now, your name rang a bell. Honestly, it rang a bell. And it's crazy to see how, like, our paths are aligned. I was a little kid back then. Mm. <laughs> I, I, said to you, I thought I said to you on the phone when we, when we first spoke, like, I was a kid back there. And I look at mm. us now, like, it's actually crazy how people's paths can align. And you, I used to see you on TV. Yeah. And now we're here right now. And you guys see us on the TV or the YouTube, whatever you're watching, mm. or audio. By the way, if you haven't already, five stars us. Like it, comment, please. It goes a long way. But anyways, <laughs> side note, mm. it's crazy how it all works out, isn't it, bro? Yeah. Like life is so interesting. So just a quick one, mm -hmm. picture for everyone right now. You never know who you're watching behind the TV. You don't, you don't know how far you are from the person you are watching on the TV. Mm. Because I was, I was, a, I'm not gonna say how old I was. But I was a young boy mm. watching your TV, and I would literally. Yeah. 10 yards away from each other is that's that, crazy it's crazy isn't it that's crazy you're like 10 yards away from the screen yeah and now you're 10 yards away in real life it's crazy man <laughs> keep crazy. on pushing man mm. keep on yeah. pushing man but without further ado man we always like to ask a question mm. to our guests bro, it's a good it? question to you okay. you ask it bro fire Talk away if this part of your life was a chapter in your book mm -hmm. what would it be called Steep don't have to be crazy where I am right now where you yeah, are right where now where you are right now Ooh, great mm. question he came up with it Transformation. Okay. Mm. Talk to him. Chat to transformation. That would be where Talk I'm to at. Us. Um, Talk to us. So I'm literally coming out the cocoon, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I've obviously gone through this massive transition. No one talks about the end of your sports career. It's mm -hmm. just push, 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 push. Yeah. And I know it's translated into lots of different industries, but particularly with sports, 
you're using every single part of you. And for 28 years, all I did was literally run around in circles. Wow. <laughs> um, we put it like that. That's chase, metaphorical as well. Literally Ooh, yeah, run around yeah. in circles, chasing to be the best, yeah. chasing, pushing my body. Um, and I didn't realize how one brave I was, but also very naive as well. Wow. <laughs> um, and, you know, one of the things that I try and impress on my mentees is start with the end in mind mm -hmm. think about that bit so much earlier the culture mm -hmm. of sport doesn't really lend itself to that because it's like oh you don't think you're going to make it but actually that's the smart way to think so literally what do you, what do you i'm a bit of a sorry um so you know literally from school yeah. when i go into schools and kids say oh i want to go to the olympics yeah i'm like you're just seeing the glory side mm. and you know i try and keep it real for them yeah mm -hmm. at the end of the day if you're willing to do what it takes which i call champion mindset yeah you can absolutely achieve what you want to achieve that's mm -hmm. literally what i did mm -hmm. yeah but that steep cliff at the other end unless you're prepared for it it's going to be difficult. What inspired you to start running? Was it a thing where Marilyn was just always on her feet? You were always just running. You just, just there, just <laughs> no, moving oh, quick. Wait. What was it? Let's go down memory lane. Uh. Uh, um, so, no, I wasn't always on my feet. I grew up in Stonebridge, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. single parent home, Nigerian background. Mm. So you already know my mum was strict. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the first 10 years of my life was pretty rocky, mm -hmm. you know, and then at 10 years old, God decided I should go to boarding school. So mm. he put me in, in a England really lovely... Or... In England, yeah. Okay. And I went to a really nice boarding school in Hemel Hempstead called okay. Abbas Hill. And it was literally just a world away from what I knew. I had a lot of responsibility on me, on me early. So mm -hmm. I felt like, oh, I could just be a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was really lovely. The pastoral care was great. And I naturally gravitated to sports. Um, I actually played a game called lacrosse first. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh, we played it. Yeah, we played it. We played it. Oh yeah, it's in that field lacrosse. Yeah, yeah. Love lacrosse. Um, so basically from that, I would run everywhere. I was center. So uh -huh. it was great. And then one day, my PE teacher was like, I think you should go to running club. And mm. I was like, why? How old are you at this time? 10. Okay. <laughs> 10 years old, yeah. I was like, why am I going to running club? I'm already good at running. Um, but I'm thankful I did because that's where I met my first coach, mm -hmm. George. And he's recently just passed. Oh, just he was 90. So he okay. did an incredible okay. yeah. um, and touched so many athletes lives. But yeah, so I met him and he not only saw my talent, but he also saw, you know, the difference between me and my peers. And he was just um, determined to fill that gap. So literally this guy, when I went home on the holidays, he would come to Northwest London and take me back to Watford, which is basically where he lives to train and then take me back after. He what? got me my first bikes. He would give me my pocket money. He just wanted to make sure that, you know, I stayed in the sport. Wow. So he was... What made what made you different? What made me different? Yeah, what made him different? Did he do this for other no, kids? No, both. Like, both. Like, what yeah, made, so what made you different to him? To stand what made, out. But also, as you said, what made him different? What, yeah. Is that what you said? I, I think, think so. you yeah. know... <laughs> So George is just one of those diamonds that you come across, you know, what yeah. he did for me, he would do for absolutely anyone that needed that. Wow. Like the, the tributes that came out, um, you know, are just incredible. Like he has really, he's a pillar of the sporting community, especially athletics. Wow. Um, but for me, I think he just knew that if he didn't support me and level that playing field, that I would probably do something else because my wonderful mama she was not having it. Mm. Oh, wow. She's like, I didn't send you to school to run, read a book. <laughs> you know, like, I was supposed to be a lawyer, doctor, running. What? What is running? Like, yeah. that's not a career. So he found out the hard way because I was trying to explain to him, like, don't come to my house. Yeah. <laughs> and he weren't listening. I needed a physio appointment. He's like, of course, I'm going to take you, Marilyn. Like, he's just being, I was like, okay. I don't know how to tell my mom this, but I think we're just going to see what happens when you arrive. Yeah. And it wasn't good. So, oh, really? yeah, she was like, she just literally shouting at him. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Come on, get out of my house. Why are you taking my daughter? She's 10. Blah, blah, blah. It was so oh, embarrassing. Oh, you're 10 these times. You're still 10. I was like 10. Yeah, I was, I was young. I pulled okay. my groin and um, he was going to take me to physio. Um, I mean, I understand I, her concern. I, I, yeah, I, I, I can get it. I can get it. Like, you're 10 but years old. You know her I mean? reaction <laughs> was kind of a lot. So, what they did was invite her up to school, gave mm -hmm. her a nice, like, cream tea, mm -hmm. sat her down just to explain that, you know, my, my grades aren't going to suffer. Mm. But I am very talented in athletics. Yeah. And George is, you know, one of our reputable coaches. Um, I mean, it was my fault. I should have told her earlier, but mm. <laughs> I didn't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I remember going back to school after that. And I was like, oh, gosh, he's going to tell me to leave the group. Oh, my gosh, this is so embarrassing. And he mm. was just like, oh, I see what you're going through. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, he was just like, that's why they then invited my mum up to explain the positivity of, you know, the balance of, 
extracurricular as well as because I did other stuff as well. I loved to sing. I was in debate team. Um, Very important school to have, by the way, mm-hmm. debating. Yeah, the ability it was to build fun. to articulate. Your, it's, yeah. it's actually funny too. Obviously, we'll talk about it later on, but you do speaking now. Yes, and you want debating debating class. Yeah, a lot of the schools we we learn, we're thinking, why don't even have, why don't even need that? Mm-hmm. It's funny how they all come back again to help mm-hmm. us another season it's of our so lives. It's so true. It's so true. And so actually, for me, it's interesting that I'm a speaker because. I didn't speak a lot when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I was, I just didn't. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, I just, I find that very interesting. Very, very interesting. But as you were saying, so you're 10 years old, George brought the whole family or brought mummy to school to speak to the people, mm-hmm. saying, all right, cool, your grace, I'm going to suffer, but she still has a talent for, for running to let her do it. So what happens next? So she begrudgingly agreed. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, okay, as long as you get your A's. Um, And that's it. I literally just ran with it. I just had a very normal, you know, journey into just did districts, did counties, Mm -hmm. then got to national level. I I was pretty much under the radar. No one really expected me to to do anything major until I switched to the 800. So what were you doing this time? Yeah, from... You just do everything, really. Like 100, 200, 1500. Okay, right, right, right. And were you winning these ones? Yeah, just at school, you know, I was a so big national... fish in a small pond. I okay. see. I so, see. oh, oh, Mar- yeah, she, she could do it. She could do it all. She could do this. She could do that. She could do this. But then you're saying when you honed in on one, that's when yeah. you took off. And it wasn't my plan. Okay. It was George's plan. <laughs> oh, right. So he tricked me and he sent me to the um like an open meeting at Watford. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, because I in my head I thought I was gonna be a 200 meter sprinter. Mm-hmm. I didn't have the start for that. Um, and so he was like, okay, you're going to do the 800. By start, you mean when you're like, you're on the pedals and then you have to... Yeah, okay, okay. I was a bit slow. I said, are blocks. they called pedals? What are they called? Blocks. Blocks, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not running. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm used to driving, isn't it? <laughs> so I see, I see something like that, pedals. Yeah, we'll call them pedals. <laughs> but so, okay, so... You started off on the on the pedals, aka the blocks, right? <laughs> and then you, you weren't good at the, the taking off, but you were good at the accelerating, I'm guessing? Or the stamina. Or the stamina. Um, more, yeah, stamina based. And I think I got that from, you know, I played tennis, I played mm-hmm. netball, I played lacrosse, and that a lot of that start stop. So I built up a lot of kind of explosivity. Is that a word? Speed endurance. Speed endurance. And also okay. my ability to kind of just handle lactic acid was really high. Oh, okay. okay. So when you think about it, it actually was very conducive to the 800. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, which I didn't know. I just didn't want to run far, but I also did a lot of cross country. But George obviously. Or, Obviously, could see this. Oh, sorry. Just to put a pin on it, guys. Obviously, I'm not an athlete here, but for what I understand, lactic acid. The more you have, the harder it is for you to oh, run, yeah. isn't it? It's like running through cement. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when she said yeah, that yeah. she had a high endurance of lactic acid. That means she was able to endure longer periods whilst running with the lactic acid. Yeah. There. Ah, right. That's yeah. basically the 800 and the 400. That's why they're difficult. And the hurdles, four hurdles. Four hurdles. Yeah. Oh, I never did Oh, yeah, that. It makes sense. But you have to be able to kind of push through that pain. That last 50 meters is like going through cement. Wow. <laughs> and the burn as well. And you can do that. But that's what you train for. Okay. So all your training is simulation to handle that and mm-hmm. just to build your capacity. Mm. Um, so yeah, George put me into a open meet. So I was basically running with anyone. So you basically aim for times. Okay. Which meant there were men in that race as well. So I was like, oh, let me run down some of these guys. Hmm. And I took my time down from... 216 to like 207 and i was like okay that's a lot of time that and running fun. <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of, that's like eight seconds yeah so then i was like that's when i took him seriously because he would always threaten the 800 and then i was like oh but then when i did that i was like oh okay if i actually train for this mm-hmm. um so that was kind of the idea at that point there we think about the olympics we just doing it as a hobby no, still no, wow the olympics i don't really know what it was <laughs> damn so it was at a point here where you saw the districts or nationals or county yeah i always went to kind of school level school so english school okay um at that kind of level i wasn't really winning i was just kind of you know i'd be on the podium third fourth mm-hmm. um but i was just yeah i was just enjoying it i loved the camaraderie the friendships the mm-hmm. bonds my club shaftesbury barnet harriers was a you know a huge family big um, up you guys <laughs> yeah, <big> up. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. up the stripes we say come on um so then i carried on through sixth form then i went to bath uni mm-hmm. studied french and politics i think because of my mom's hesitancy i didn't really believe i could make a career out of it so was it for like for you or was it when you was it like more like a limiting belief from from home and wait a career out of what was it the, what the french and politics or the 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 running okay was it like yeah. a limiting belief yeah, I just, I didn't have that support at home. Okay. So, and all I saw was 
other people's families taking them to the me and mm. what happens if I don't have George. Mm. So I just thought, okay, let me, I think I did French and politics. So I thought it could translate into law mm -hmm. and make my mum proud <laughs> eventually. Right. But then actually in my final year of uni, I made the Commonwealth Games team. Come on. So wow. that was a big wow. Yeah. Like the time I ran, things just fell into place. Wow. And again, it was just perseverance. How did you feel at that point when you made it and you saw that you were in? I was super excited. Mm. Um, but it was like, oh my God, I'm actually good at something. Like I actually really can do this. Um, hey, wait, hold on. It's taking you, it's taking you how long to realize this? <laughs> no, so no, honestly. 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> so you kept running for 10 years. Yeah. Was, was George kind of by your side for those 10 years? Yeah, not like a, when I went to uni, he was just like, we were still writing letters then. <laughs> letters? Wow. Yeah. So he would send me my training. Yeah. And I would just follow it. Okay. Obviously, like being in the uni environment, we had better facilities. Like obviously like Bath is a center of excellence. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. even more amazing now, but it was one of the top schools. So I literally, I did my degree. I mm -hmm. had two jobs and I trained wow. and I just kept going. <laughs> um, but they were happy times. I really enjoyed my time at Bath. Mm. But then I was just, you, you're getting to your final year. This was my final year. And I was like, okay, this is make or break. Like, God show me which way. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's usually the drop off rate, really. Oh, is it? So people usually drop off from the athletics. Yeah, and when because they life uni. starts getting real. Yeah. And then, you know, you go into whatever sort of career yeah, route you want yeah. to go into. We're not like the American system, which kind of, I feel like, helps set you up to become a professional athlete. Um, so when I did that, that's when all the ears started pricking. Like, oh, because I ran 201, which is... You know, two minutes is the golden time for 800 meter world class runners. Okay. Women. Um, and my question is, what was Mumsy saying? She didn't really understand. You know, mm. the only thing that rung a bell with her was Olympics. Okay. So <laughs> right. We're she not there yet. Yeah. So she's okay. like, oh, that's good. Commonwealth. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, she didn't really. And then again, are you going to win gold? Um, but for me, I knew it was the right progressive steps. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I was started running with, you know, Maria Matola at the time. She mm -hmm. was the person I most saw myself like. Like, she had the versatility that I was aspiring to have. And so I was just on the line with her. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm here. I made it. Mm. And then, I, you know, I'm, I feel like I respect everyone, but I fear no one. So I was definitely just trying to run her close to the line. Um, but I was two years away from the Olympics. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to be all in. Um, oh, I see. So you said two years away. You mean because Commonwealth is two years before the Olympic Games? It, well, it felt that way. Yeah. yeah. So it was in 2006 in okay. um, Australia. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I was just gassed to go to Australia. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so was that first time you leave the country because of a, because of your no? Your sport? I done. Um, I did the World University Champs before that, so oh, that wow. was my f first big kind of um, meet abroad. Yeah. Um, and I got a bronze. I think oh, I was ranked on. something like 47th out of 50, but I came away with a bronze. So wow, like, okay. that's impressive. Yeah, you yeah. can't always look at the paper, man. He's got yeah. to run the race. Come on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Wow. Each of my rounds was with the Turkish favorite. It was in Turkey. And the favorite was always in my rounds. So you knew like the crowd would be hyped. So I just followed her. And yeah. then ended up with a bronze. It was great. Wow. <laughs> so Australia, 2006 now. Yeah. You're there. And you're thinking, wow, this actually could be a reality now. But obviously at the same time, you are you still going through limiting beliefs? Mm. How's that? How's that like for you? Well, I started to struggle. No, I was very confident, to be honest. Okay. I was just like, okay, let's do this. Um, and I made the final and I ran two minutes. Um, oh, you actually won the two minutes now? Yeah, at, at the Commonwealth Games. Mm. Yeah. So you're telling me you went from 217 back at the, the meet with the boys. Yeah. And you've gone down how many years from 217 to two? It was The, the progression was very quick. I think within three... Three to four years. That's insane. I dropped to that's like insane world class time. So when that happens, though, it's it's a little bit tricky because you don't know what you did to do it. But I mm -hmm. feel like it's just the build up of the training. Yeah, and Compounding. that's why I try and Compounding. tell youngsters mm -hmm. like you might PB every week, but then you might have a period where you don't. Mm. But it will drop at some point, and I think that's just what happened for me. Obviously, lifestyle changes as well. You change. I was growing. Um, I started to be more focused and intentional with my training as well. So yeah. eventually it just all marinades and then the drop happens. But also just the environment I was in, you know, the races that I was in, it started to change. I started to understand my race more as well. Um, so yeah, it was it was great. I was around, you know, so many elite athletes that I'd just seen on TV and I was like, hey. How's that like? It was great. I was like, I like this. This mm. is where I belong. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Because you know what? I love that point there. What you said there. That's where I belong. Because so many people, right? They see these people here. They're starstruck. And they, they get a bit scared. of Imposter yeah. syndrome. Mm -hmm. So how do yeah. you make sure? Because I'm sure people in your, in your field came. Had imposter syndrome. And because of that, they sunk. 
Yeah. How do you make sure you swam? That's a good question. Great question. I just was always audaciously confident. I love mm. that. I love that. Um, I think when you grow up the way I grew up, yeah, I just believed I belonged. I love that God so so much, man. I've been in care. I have, you know, been in school in a school where I had every reason to feel like I had imposter syndrome, but I didn't. You yeah. know, and I can only I can really only say that's God's just wow. helping me know that I belong. That's good. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I didn't have insecurities. I did, but when it came to that, I knew I was putting in work. This was my gift. I deserve to be there. That's amazing. So I just, yeah, definitely. With my running, that was I was just very audaciously confident. That's amazing. And looking back to what I, what I love to say, right, the reason why I love athletics so much, right, mm. is because you guys are the pinnacle. And I, one thing, regardless of how introverted or extroverted you are as an athlete, one thing which you have to have is confidence. And you're literally, you're literally, showing, you're literally showing to us how important confidence is. Were there many people around you was everyone around you very confident too in the athletics field or was it like were people like pretending or was it, was it really <laughs> not really a thing for them mm. um i always kind of gravitated towards the americans i liked their bravado mm. um one thing about me when i'm trying to achieve anything or do anything i look for who's doing it well mm -hmm. so That's i felt like in the uk the mentality wasn't really strong like okay. I, you know you'd be at the line and people are like showing their nervousness i was like yeah i'm nervous everyone's nervous but it, yeah. like you need to man up now yeah 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 <laughs> um so i was just like that and i remember things like the english schools when we were younger mm. people start sharing their pbs i was always like i don't know i've never run this before <laughs> why, would, why would they do that i don't know like i'm just like they're trying to make you feel nervous or something they're trying to put no, you they off they were trying to I feel like they're trying to make themselves feel better. Okay. So I would always just be like, oh, I don't know, I don't remember the last time I ran this, mm, <laughs> and yeah. then win. <laughs> um, because it's on paper, like go and look at itself. But yeah, I, yeah. I just, I feel like with athletics, you literally have to focus on your lane, focus on you. Because when you start thinking about this person and that person, then you, they take you off your game. Bro, and that's his favorite topic. Slay literally. in your lane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. talk to so, us, bro. Yeah. No, I would marry. I would marry to land <laughs> yeah. on that one because I feel like you got somewhere in the tank for that one. Yeah. Because it's like it's it's the same as life, right? Focus 100%. on your lane, and that's what we're always talking yeah. about: focusing on your own yeah. lane. Because people look at other people, yeah. and then when you look at someone else, you might trip up over your foot because you're not focusing on what you're doing. That comparison game is dangerous. Yeah, extremely. Yes, people, I have made a group, a community for people. I say people, but it's go-getters, entrepreneurs, people who want to improve their lives. Probably some of you guys as well might be interested. It's called The Round Table. And essentially in this group, I will be getting together a whole load of people who will have the same vision and they're about the same stuff. I'm just going to be sharing as much value, resources, um, I don't know, links to podcasts, to, to, to videos that I've seen, to books that I've read, anything that's helped me on my journey and helped my people on their journey i'll be dropping in this chat so if you're interested go to the description below or whatever there is it will be somewhere click on that link and join the chat trust me you will love it quick one people so i'm taking event bookings now to speak at events for the last few months now i've been speaking at universities and some schools places such as ucl warwick right but now i'm officially taking event bookings so you want someone to speak to you guys about or speak to your people about confidence imposter syndrome and the art of improvement public speaking I'm the guy for you. So contact me on Coach Klutze, Robert Klutze, and I'll be there for you. And like I just said, you know, about the World University Games, I went there and I was on paper ranked 47 out of 50. Mm. If I'd have focused on that, I would have come 47 or 48 or 49 out of 50. Probably even 50. worse. Yeah, probably 50 if you I just on went and I took it round by rounds mm. and I came out with a bronze medal. Oh, crazy. So, and bronze is third. Pardon? Bronze is third. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was I was making sure that I was you know what I was saying. <laughs> Ros is third, I'm right? So you went from pedals. from forty seven to third. To third, yeah. But they told you, they said Marilyn, you're forty seven. That's what I was on paper. No, that's that what they're saying time. essentially. Yeah. If they're putting on paper, they're saying, look, this is yeah. what you are. Yeah. Uh, you do what you want to do yeah. in it. And the coach was like, Oh, it'd be good if you just make the semi final. Hey. I'm, like, well, I'm trying to make the final. Wow. Yeah. And you did. And I did. Come on. That's amazing. And I got some silverware. So how how, impor how important are the, um, the, the coaches in this field? Because obviously you're saying your coach was saying to you, maximum semi-finals. Mm. How significant, how important are they in terms of the, not just like the training, but how important are they in terms of the mindset of helping you believe? Coaches are 
pivotal mm. <laughs> to your development as an athlete. Mm. They have so much power as well. So it's important you have a good coach. Mm. George was the best coach I ever had. Wow. It's just a shame I didn't really have him as a pro- as a elite athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, round about that Commonwealth time was when the transition to my next coach happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like when you do transition from coaches, if possible, to kind of have that overlap, but egos. <laughs> mm. So they often don't want to work together. But I think, you know, a lot of my scholars that go out to the States, they're really scared because their coach at home doesn't want to liaise with the coach in America. And it's like, they need to work together if they are truly, you know, trying to do the best for the athlete and have yeah. their interests at heart. But yeah. no, it's all about their egos. Oh, I want to be the athlete, to co- the coach to have, you know, X amount of athletes run under 10 seconds. Um, but in terms of building you up, in your mindset, that's the last person you probably talk to before you go out into battle. Mm. So they are very key. You pick up the energy of your coach. So a lot of my coaches were really nervous. Wow. I was like, I don't need you around me then. What? Because you're not helping me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's like, a metaphor for life again. You don't want to be like, if you're around those kind of people, Why are that's you how you nervous? Gonna feel? You gave me the training. Like, you <laughs> tell me this, I'm going to break world records with this, and now you're nervous. I can't do this. You don't know what I'm running it. <laughs> what? You don't know what I'm running it, bro. Like, yeah. why are you nervous? I'm doing this. And I've, I've got two questions, actually. So one of them is to do with coaches, coaches versus trainers so keep that in your mind yeah because mm-hmm. i want to know what the difference is mm-hmm. but then i want to take it back a little mm-hmm. bit to the comparison when you're talking about comparison because everybody in life they deal with comparison all the time mm. but then you're in a field or you're in a field where that is your every single day like mm. you're racing against someone like it's literally comparing your times yeah. Yeah. you see what i'm saying so how did you deal with that number one and number Great two question. how i guess how was it how was it represented in that field <laughs> obviously no no pun in, in, you know what I mean but how was it actually represented on that on, on the field like how was like comparing yourself to the other person how did it look when it came to running I think you know when you grow up with a lot of no's mm. you just you, I'm, I was always trying to turn them into yeses mm-hmm. so that's one reason like I had a lot of when I came on the scene I was not what the UK thought was an 800 meter runner I was muscular. Mm. I was, you know, a few shades darker. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when I started running 800, there was a lot of naysayers. Like, you're not going to run this time. So I ran it and faster. Um, So I feel like every... huh? Verbally they said this. Yeah, coaches would say, oh, she's too big to run the 800, (laughs) isn't she? Oh, she'll never break 203. She'll never break two minutes. And by these times, I was running 159, like water Mm -hmm. running out the tap. So I was just like, I don't really understand like where all this negativity has come from. But all I can do is let my running do the talking. So Mm -hmm. I felt like I always had that, not a chip, but I just always was like, okay, so many people don't think I belong here. So let me just show them why I do. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of, I couldn't compare myself because I was so different to Mm. the girls I was running against, Mm -hmm. literally in every way. So that's why I looked to America Mm. And Africa as well, because I felt the relatable, like the representation is so, so big. Yeah. And I didn't actually realize, you know, in terms of me being out there as an 800 meter runner, how many young girls were seeing that and thinking, oh, because they would never pick, even if they were good at it, they would not have picked it because you get pigeonholed into sprinting. You know, everyone was, would look at me and be like, oh, why aren't you doing the 200? So, well, actually, I'm not actually good at the 200. Yeah. This is my specialty. So, oh, so black women weren't like you guys so weren't. We had Kelly even... Holmes. Okay. And we had um, like Joe Fenn, but they're all light skin mixed race. Okay. Um, and, you know, I don't know if we're going to get into this, but there's a lot of kind of systemic racism in sport. Wow. Okay. Um, and colorism. And a lot of my sisters in sport have been speaking about, I don't know if you know, Annika Onwara. She's got a really powerful story. Mm. But, yeah, I think I was just a few shades too dark for the 800 for wow. GB. So I think, you know, and also as a black athlete, anyway, you have to run 10 times harder just to to earn your place. Mm. Uh, so I had a lot of that. And I had, you know, when I came into it, I was running fast. I had just this blissful first six years in sport. But I noticed like a lot of, you know, black coaches were like, come on, you make sure you beat her and you make sure you do. I was just like... Wow, I didn't realize the politics I was coming into. Mm-hmm. It was all very fairy tale from school and just winning, and mm-hmm. and then I realized that the elite realm it's it's a battlefield, and the politics that come into it, uh, I, I wasn't prepared for. But that's so interesting because I would have thought like it would have been easier in terms of like the politics when you when you got bigger because everyone's made it now, so everyone just everyone just point each other because we're the top of the top. That's what I would have thought. 
which is really interesting. But it's like you say you want to talk about yes. coaches versus trainers. Also, the question I had was, what's the difference between a coach and a trainer? Or are they trainer's interchangeable? Trainer's quite an American term, isn't okay. it? So wh- what I know as a trainer, they would be physiotherapists right. in the States or um, speed trainers. Mm-hmm. And okay. that's kind of associated with American football. Um we don't really use that term in the UK. Okay. So you don't say, oh, I'm a trainer, but you say my coach. I say my coach, yeah. Oh, fair enough. I yeah. see. But when I was working at University of Central Florida, mm-hmm. the trainers were the physios um, or in the American football realm, they'd be okay. the speed trainers. So I they'd see. be coaches that trained for speed. That makes sense. Yeah. So, boom. Sorry, let's go. Because when I was out there, I um, was like, trainers, trainers. Yeah. <laughs> <They> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, no. So... 2006 now, mm. Australia. Yeah, you came third. Uh, no, no, you didn't. No, that was the beforehand. So what happened? In, what happened in Australia, Australia? came seventh. So okay, we made the final. Yes, and ran two minutes. Okay. Um, so that was a big leap. Um, in my career, um, put me on the map. I guess that was the um, first big event, right? That was my first major. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so I think you know, it was overwhelming a little bit, but. You know, in terms of maybe finishing a little bit higher, but I was happy. I I extended myself, so you can't really ask for more than that. It was it. it was a big PB, and also just navigating the rounds, mm-hmm. um, which was really good. I was also kind of stuck between a few coaches because my university coach was like, "Okay, here's a program," and then George gave me a program, and then I was transitioning to my other coach. So it was a bit overwhelming with all the kind of different the voices. Voices, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, in the end, I enjoyed the weather i enjoyed the mm. atmosphere and i was like i want more of this That's and the good. olympics is in two years so i just decided like i was gonna go for it so Amazing. question right you're finishing university now mm. final year uni, final year of uni and then you get the commonwealth mm-hmm. and then not only do you get the commonwealth you come seventh how did you deal with going from being behind the scenes and now coming out the light or coming out the dark how was that transition for you in such a short space of time it was a whirlwind because suddenly when you're the essentially like the number one for the nation, there's a lot of expectation that comes with it. Mm-hmm. So um, I think obviously because my face didn't really fit, they were just trying to work out, okay, how far, like, is this a fluke? Is she going to carry this on? I had quite a good rivalry with another young girl that's coming through at the time as well. Mm-hmm. Quite so a that good helps. rivalry. How does that, yeah. what's that? As in, I thought, what's that, what's it pushes that you on. <laughs> Oxymoron, a good rivalry. <laughs> yeah, like, you need people to push yeah, you push on. Yeah, push like a good competition. Design. Yeah, yeah okay, she was okay. my rival, but it was good. It yeah. Was good stuff. Yeah, so at least I knew, like, when she was on the track, we we're going to have a good battle and it's going to be fast. Yeah. Because okay. I was a very, my style of running was very different to all the other girls. That's another reason why the comparison wasn't really there because okay. I was 400, 800 specialist. Okay. So it meant my first lap was always going to be quite quick. Okay. Um, and I noticed whenever I tried to change to run how the girls ran, it mm. didn't suit me. Mm. So why, what I mean by that is they would rather go through a slower first lap and mm-hmm. then wind it up. Whereas I need to establish my rhythm early. So, you know, I could run 52 seconds for that 400. So going through in 58 was no a no-brainer. But for a lot of them, they could only run maybe 56 seconds. So going through in 58 is close to their yeah. max. Um, That's something that I really do rate about athletes. It's that you actually have to know yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like so many people just in life, not even necessarily athletes or people, everyone in their own field, you need to know yourself to be able to get the best results. Your pace. And then people actually take that out of you, your coaches. And for us, it might be a mentor for for example, or right? Or our coaches. Or our coaches, yeah. yeah. So like a confidence coach, if I want to improve in my confidence. But when you get those people into your life, they actually, they they show you your blind spots. Yes. yes. They show you your blind spots. They show, okay, you need to do this. You need to yeah. do that. Have you ever realized that you do this before? You can actually improve on that. Yeah. And then you knowing yourself enabled you to get a much better time. And I think yeah. people can take that and actually apply it to their lives as yeah, well. 100%. And actually understand who they are themselves. Yeah. And they can do that through journaling. Yeah. They could do that for actually asking people, okay, yeah. what is it about? Like, tell me about myself, innit? Mm. Like, tell me the things that I do so that, that you can actually analyze yourself from other people's perspective and the people that love you's mm. perspective. That is so Do you good. journal? I don't actually. Did you? I did, I did, I did, I did a lot. Mm. <laughs> I did a lot. Back when you were running, like, yeah. heavy. Yeah, I did a Why lot. Why is that? Um, I needed to see patterns, I needed to understand where you know if things went wrong i wanted to be able to go back you know i wrote down so much 
you know, you kept essentially a training diary, which was everything. I didn't just write what I did in my sessions. I write down, wrote down the weather. I wrote down how I was feeling. I was wrote, mm. wrote down any little thing. Um, I think, you know, another part of my story is I had a lot of like niggles and injuries. Mm -hmm. And so it would help kind of me trace that. And you could kind of see patterns. I struggled with fatigue a lot. So it helped me realize when I was, you know, redlining. Um, what does that mean? Try and correct that. So basically running on empty. All right. Over running on training. Wow. Um, like burning out. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mm. think, you know, that was essentially why my career ended because my coaches didn't fully know how to train a 400, 800 specialist. Mm which was a shame because I feel like I could have run so much quicker than I actually did. Like I know my body wanted to, mm. but you've got to get the training right. So that was really key to me because obviously like they are the experts, but they get to a point in the athlete's journey where they actually should be, it should be a partnership. Okay. I think when you're young, yes, okay. You kind of listen to your coach and, but there, there comes a point where it needs to be a partnership. And I think for that, for me, when that happened, I was met with a lot of resistance. Like, I know what you need. <laughs> mm. like, yeah, but you're also not listening to me and I'm the expert of my body. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that was kind of hard, but that's where my journal would come in really handy mm. because I would then be able to take that to my physio and be like, hey, well, this is what's happened and this is what's been happening and get some other advice as well. And there's a reason I asked you that as well, because I had a feeling that you had a journal as mm. well. Because when you want to learn a lot about yourself, that's one of the ways to do yes. it, right? So that's something that people can also take to mm -hmm. actually write a journal and you can actually trace back to things yeah. and find patterns, as you said, yes. in yourself, in your way of living. Yeah. And if something pops up, let's like say, for example, you're ill, you might look yes. back in your journal a couple of days yeah. ago and said, oh, I was out today, didn't yeah. bring a scarf, didn't <laughs> bring a coat. And you wonder why you were ill. Because yeah. obviously you got a cold yeah. and then you got a cold. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you can trace, the, obviously yeah. that's a very small example, yeah. but you can trace these things back. That's 100% right. Um, I think self-awareness is a massive skill oh, that skill. so many people don't. Yeah don't have um i mean i'm i'm not journaling at the moment because i just needed a break but mm. i know i know myself very very well i can imagine you had to i had to. you had to i'm yeah. talking you know two decades um but also it was very difficult when you're coming across you know to be a coach you have to be confident yes yeah. so i had a lot of big energy egos yeah that i was kind of like okay tussling with um so that's the other reason, because I felt like if I don't know who I am, if I, you know, th then I'll just be lost. <laughs> mm. um, but it wasn't easy, like especially, you know, so those are my personal coaches I'm talking about. But also I had a lot of kind of confrontation with a performance coach who's kind of runs the whole federation mm -hmm. and they have these expectations on you. And, you know, to stand up to them is a big deal. But because I knew who I was and I knew what I was capable of and essentially you see me you know, once a year for an assessment, you're not there when I'm training, you're not mm -hmm. there on my camps and you're making these decisions or demanding this of me. You know, if I didn't know myself, I wouldn't be able to, you know, stand up against that. And mm. yes, it might bring some, you know, negative repercussions, but at the end of the day, I'm being true to myself. Yeah. And that's what I always try to do. And does this feed into what you're doing now then in terms of speaking out against like, Wow. Yeah. It's interesting to see along the timeline how yeah. things like link up. Yeah. We'll get I think onto this. There we'll were some this. things that just didn't really need to happen. Mm -hmm. um, athlete welfare is kind of one of my passion areas. Just, it's weird, you know, if not for the athletes, we wouldn't really have sport, mm -hmm. but we're yeah. often the last voice to be heard. Wow. Well. Do you not feel like athletes sometimes? I'm just thinking about the football, right? Mm. You guys are just kind of like like puppets. They just use you and just abuse yeah. you and just like just let you just run, run, yeah. run, and run. Then we the take difference with football is there's a bit more money at stake. Yeah, then yeah. more money, more problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, big up, um, big up yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, and I think you know, for me in 2020, when the world literally stops and everyone had a lot more thinking space, one of the things I came across was the high number of athletes that were committing suicide wow. at the end of their career. And I was like, wow, when I think about my journey, this was like, sport was something that was so exciting. It, it gave me life. Mm, yeah. And to get to the end of it and then take your life because of that, it shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Um, that's, and then some, That's so interesting because you said at the, at the very start, and I haven't forgot this, you said that sometimes at the end of the career, it's like falling off a cliff. Wow. It it's is. like the cliff edge. Yes. Sorry, continue, continue. In fact, one, the athletes that mm. was older than me she said oh yeah retirement's like death oh, and gosh. i you know i didn't think about it again until i was going through retirement and i was like 
rewind because at that stage you shouldn't have just said this is like death you should have been giving me tips yeah. you should have been coaching mentoring like look out for this uh-huh. and you know there's that culture of the couple of generations above mine of oh we went through it so get on with it so that is one of the things i wanted to change i toughen up i tough up no, what like? No, I mean they were they were, they like were to saying you. that. They no, yeah. no, you're, you're not saying that. No, but they, they were saying, saying to you that. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they were just like, well, we had to go for it, so you have to go for it. Yeah, like, so that doesn't make yeah. it right. Yeah, 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 not at all. Like this is not just a case of you know just in training. I'm talking about welfare. I'm mm. talking about safeguarding. Like, no one should be abused by their coach. Yeah, yeah. do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, there were just some major things, but also you know, kind of just because you went through it, like it doesn't make it right. Yeah. So, I'll ask you a question actually. Yeah. Obviously, we talk about the cliffs, we talk about unfortunately people committing suicide, mm. right? How much, how much do athletes in the in the Olympic space idolize the end goal of the medals, the glitz and the glamour? How have you seen that? How is, how how do people? How can I explain it? How much essentially do people idolize the end? And what, what would that do to them? Well, you're always planning backwards. You know, you're always reverse engineering. It's all yeah. about getting that gold, and it's gold. Like everyone just only gold. For gold. <laughs> wow, yeah. You know, there's two other medals there, but it's gold. You yeah. Know, top of the top, and I think, you know, I always, I was very blessed to have a mindset that I'm about more than just medals. Mm-hmm. Um, and it didn't, it didn't sit well with a lot of people. Like they were like, "You're not taking this seriously." I was like, "If I put all of my everything on a medal or." a time I'm going to be disappointed a lot yeah. because you lose so much more than you win mm. like that's just facts <laughs> and that's how you learn yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, where's the fine line though closely as an athlete you have to demand the best for yourself mm. be the best but you're saying that you're saying look I don't I don't want to focus on that where's the fine line I think you focus on the process okay so I knew when I was going to I always knew when I was going to run well okay I also knew when I wasn't going to run well uh, because the process, like you have, say you have certain boxes and you can tick them. Okay, I've had three months of uninterrupted training. I've done, you know, I've eaten. I've taken all my supplements. You know, I've controlled everything that is in me to control That's really about good. me. Yeah. But then there are things that I can't control. I can't control someone else that's going to have their fantastic day mm-hmm. so i think can't when you're able to i can't control the weather but yeah. i didn't mind the weather Bring it on, because when it was bad weather everyone's mind would go oh it's raining so i was like okay you're gonna be down but i'm gonna step up yeah that's mm-hmm. good so i live in the uk it's windy all the time we train in wind <laughs> so why should you know like yeah, 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 why yeah. should that be a bad day yeah, yeah. so i just would always be like that like literally when it rained you could see the countenance of everyone train like change. Mm. Wow. It's like, well, I'm gonna have a good race because yeah. you guys are scared of the rain. Yeah. Even we train in the rain like all the time. So I just tried to kind of counteract things like that and just control what I could control. Mm. I love that because I'm very big about in my coaching, I always talk about controllables and non controllables. A lot of a lot of things you can't control in life. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example of public speaking. You mm-hmm. c- you can't control no, you can control your tonality. You can't mm-hmm. control your body language. You can't mm-hmm. control your eye contact. You can't control your speed. But what you cannot control is how you see me, how you see me, the how they the, see me. At the front on their phone. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Or the person at the front on their stuff. phone. You can't control that. You don't know what's going on. They might be having a situation with their child. Yeah. You're yeah. thinking that they don't care about what you're saying. But the yeah. truth is, you can't control that. So similar mm. to what you said there yeah. with athletics, you can't control the things you can't control. But what you can control, you can do. Which is why you said, as you said, you knew you'd have a good race. Yeah. That's a really powerful point. It's mm. a really powerful That's point. That's where your confidence comes from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what you've done. When I was injured um, and coming back from a race, that's when I'd be most nervous because, like, oh, I don't know if I'm quite. But other that's than natural, that, though. Yeah, that's exactly. natural. With your speaking, um, do you like how do you prepare your talks? How do I prepare them? Yeah. How do I prepare them? So, okay, cool. I brainstorm everything. I yeah. brainstorm all my thoughts and I put them to freeze. Okay. So, I have, so I have, so I say I'm going to talk about perseverance. Uh-huh. I have three points. One point. One point. One point. Then under that, I have a story for each one because people remember things by stories. Mm. Then yeah. I make sure I have pictures there. So, like, the rules are free. So, yeah. so I talk about, I don't know, uh, confidence. Mm-hmm. One part, I talk about my my story, mm-hmm. how, how I grew my confidence. Another part, I talk about um, the highs and lows of living a life of lack of lacking confidence. Mm. And the next part, I talk about um, uh, maybe a, a famous person who struggled with confidence and they've grown up. They've grown... Um, into a level of having confidence in themselves. All those three things are there and I put together and then break, build a lovely story. That's what I do. 
Mm. Yeah. My speaker. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you sometime. Come yeah, on. yeah, no, I'll speak, I'll speak a few places soon, but yes, indeed. we'll see you. Anyways, yes, indeed. back to what I was saying, though. So, yes. we'll talk about 2006, now 2008. Now, mm. in fact, what happened between 2006 and 2008? Uh, oh, just went from glory to glory, really. <laughs> and I had I had something, I just I Go realized ahead. something as well. Yeah, what a lot of athletes do, what mm-hmm. I'm hearing, is that they prepare for a different end goal than what they should be preparing for. So they prepare for the end goal of the gold. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just gold, gold, gold. That's all I see. Gold. Mm -hmm. But then they should be preparing for, of course, yeah, you've got the winnings, but you also have the losses and you also have an end of a career. Like you can't just keep winning gold for the whole of your life until you're 90. (laughs) So you're saying you're helping people. You're going to help people or you help people when you Mm -hmm. mentor them to handle that cliff. And I like how you said cliff. Initially, I didn't like how you said cliff. I'm like, why are you saying cliff for? Like, oh, isn't it, isn't it fun? Like, but that's the thing. You're helping them handle that. Mm. And the difference between you and the person that you spoke to back in the day is, it's rude to point, the difference between you and the person <laughs> that you spoke to back in the day is that that person said that it's like death. The like, yeah. end of your career is like death. But you said it's like a cliff. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can survive a cliff. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how? How? For help. Parachute. Oh, someone has to on. give me the parachute. Ooh. Click me. They're clicking me. Someone yeah. has to give me the parachute, and you're giving people the parachute. That's now. good. That's good. Love that. That's good. Hey, I'm a speaker too. <laughs> that's good. You know what I mean? I'm a speaker too. Uh, um, that is good. And you're giving, you're really giving people that is the good. You're a parachute. Mm. Oh. You're the parachute now. Why is it powerful? Yeah, you're, handed, you're, you're standing. You're standing there. You're saying, look, here's your parachute. Mm. Obviously, you know what I'm saying. When you're ready, come take yeah. it, yeah. and then you can jump off gracefully. Gracefully. Instead of falling, like the other lady said to your death. That's so good. And guess what? The parachute, you actually land with your two feet. Yeah. You don't land dead. It might, it might be a rough landing. Yeah, yeah. But guess what? You're still alive. You're still alive. You're still alive. Alive, to, alive to find another day. That is, mm-hmm. that's, that's, I that's love the that. you've done, bro. The best? Bro, that's the best one. <laughs> 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 bro, that's amazing. That was amazing, bro. That was so good. Okay. Guys, talk, that was so good. <laughs> Let that's me know in the comments if that was good. Thank that you, That was Mary. good, man. Thank but bro, it's like, I think in all life we all need a parachute, man. We all need someone mm-hmm. there to guide us through the journey, mm-hmm. especially through the lows too, because mm-hmm. it's easier in the highs. Mm-hmm. Like, no one needs to be there for you really and truly when the highs, like, you're doing well enough, but the lows, mm-hmm. that's when you need someone there around to be like, you mm-hmm. know what, nah, no, I've been through that and I got through it too. Yeah. Like, I'm big on that, you know, because mm-hmm. a lot of people feel like we go through things by ourselves. It's mm-hmm. only just me going through it, but yeah. countless people have gone through retirement when it comes to athletics. But not everyone, unfortunately, has someone around them to be like, yo, I've been through it. That's you can it. get through it too. So what you're doing there, as bro said, so perfectly, mm. is powerful, man. And it's don't ever neglect fun. that. Keep on doing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're going to talk about it a bit later on, but I know you said you're on the board of, athleti- of athletics for UK. Mm-hmm. Is that a big part of what you do? Like yeah, the parachuting? So I guess I just wanted to be a part of those conversations and the de- decision Needed. making. Needed. Because so many decisions were made about me. Mm and my body and my performance and my life yeah. by people that I can't relate to or mm-hmm. can't relate to me. Yeah. Um, so it became a passion point of mine because I just felt like they were so disconnected from the community. You know, at the beginning of our conversation, you were saying you love athletics. Athletics is one of the most accessible sports, especially in underrepresented communities. And when you look at board level, it's all middle-aged white men mm. um, from a very different social class. So I felt like that diversity is mm. just not there. So I wanted to kind of impress on that. I remember applying the first year, I didn't get on, but I feel like everything is in its timing. I think I was too angry. Mm. <laughs> Back to the angry girl. <laughs> um, I was just, yeah, running everywhere. So I don't think it was time because they wouldn't have been ready for me either. Mm. But there's, there was a shift. Like one thing about athletics has been very unstable in terms of a leadership for years. Oh. Like, yeah, it's been really poor, which doesn't help the landscape either. Is that guy still there, Mr. Co? Sir Co? So he is part of World Athletics. Oh, World. Yeah, okay. Lord Co, whatever he's called. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is it where he's called? If he's a governor of my, governor of my former university. Oh, yeah, really? big, big up Lord Co, man. Yeah, man, the governor. He's like, <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, you know, also the chair that came on board when I applied, I felt like he actually cared about the athletes. What's, that a, was what's the chair? The, 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 oh gosh, so <laughs> the person the board, in charge. Yeah, so the non execs will have the chair. So Ian Beatty, he's our chair. And him. he's basically um, teams up with the CEO okay. and they basically lead the group. Okay. Um, but he really spoke about things that resonated with me. And I was like, the first leader I felt like that actually really wanted to hear the athlete voice and make. I mean, athletics was in a crisis at that time. So he really wanted to make a difference. And he's really pushing for all of that. And then 
as as a non exec for UK Athletics, I also sit on the England board as well, mm -hmm. which for me was really powerful as well because I came through that domestic um, sort of pathway, you know, my club and everything like yeah, that. So, yeah. um, and obviously England's the biggest home country, so it's important to make sure they're getting it right because that's the next kind of net that everyone, you know, UKA, they're very elite focused. I get that. It's about those medals. As in um, UK athletics, athletics. Yeah. Okay. So they focus more on the elite pathways and they're, you know, they can only support so many people. Mm -hmm. Whereas with England, they tend to catch, you know, a lot of people that will make the team. People like yourself, who were, <laughs> you didn't come through that way, but you came through the, as you said, the, the, um, the cross countries, the, the district, the levels, nationals. Yeah. To what, yeah. It makes exactly. sense. Exactly. And they, they actually capture a lot more athletes than UK athletics will. So mm. it's nice wow. kind of having a seat in both. So just to, put into perspective are you saying like the UK athletics there are people who are like from early so okay let's put into like school school um school examples right so UK athletics they're like the people who from early been the cleverest in the room and then the the your where you are you're dealing with people who were late bloomers people who aren't as clever from the start but may kept, were still able to make it to the top they just need a bit more nurturing <coughs> is that what it is the two different brands I wouldn't even say that I just think okay. it's so cutthroat oh. making it or not and UK sport who hold the purse strings, they're only interested in medals. Mm. So that is the focus of UK athletics. Okay. Whereas there's a lot of, you know, they might be young, they might be older, but they may not have a medal. Damn. So let's go, let's go straight into 2008. We'll talk about the Olympics. Let's, mm. talk, let's oh, go straight. Makes me smile. Let's go, let's go <laughs> to the Olympics. You should smile. You deserve to smile because mm. that was an amazing, amazing time. So you went to the Olympics, your first Olympics. So you went to Commonwealth now. Mm. You come seventh. In fact, no, we're at uni. So big, no, first of all, big up George, right? Big, big up, up George. George. Mm. He he soul. he saw you from ten years old. He helped you, nurtured you, he pushed you, he coached you to get to where you were. Cool. You go to university now. We're juggling, working, studies, athletics. Last year, it's crunch time now. Yeah, I will say to myself, right, is it gonna be a law thing to impress my mum, <laughs> or am I gonna chase my dreams? Mm. Right? Okay. It comes. It works out. We go, to, we go to Commonwealth Games. We go to the Commonwealth Games now. We come seventh. Amazing. Now you're hungry. Now you're dedicated. Now you're determined to make the Olympics in mm -hmm. Beijing to, in 2008. So now we make 2008 Olympics. Yeah. That's the scene, guys. Talk to us, please. Mm. Talk so to just us. rewind. Because yeah. in 2007, I made my first World Champs team. Come on. Wow. Yeah, and we got a bronze nice. for the relay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so I think that kind of catapulted me onto funding. Hmm. Oh, so they couldn't, yeah, they couldn't not fund me because I had a medal. <laughs> so, were you the part of 30 people that year then? With the I made it that year. That oh, is wow. great. <laughs> Out of how many people? Everyone does athletics, bro. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone who does yeah. athletics, only 30 people get the, the funding per year. How many people do athletics per year then? Like, is it like 20,000? Oh, no, probably more than it. I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. It's, it's probably a lot more. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's about that the same way, amount of episodes lot. you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot. It's a lot. We got a lot. Because one of the things with athletics is so unbridled. Like, mm. everyone does it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In every corner, everyone's got that school sports day story. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, because of that, I was on the funding pathway. Mm -hmm. Um. And, yeah, I had a great few years into, in between 2006 and 2008. It was like... You know, that I didn't see anything other than going to the Olympics. Mm. And I think that's kind of how your mindset has to be as well. Um, so Laser focus. I had a great So in this time here, we completely focused, just no relationships, mm. just focus on athletics. Was that, was that how that's it was? A, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. Relationships and of course, you... <laughs> <laughs> it's a great topic. <laughs> no, but the, reason why, the, re the reason why I asked that question, right, is because, like... <laughs> the reason why I asked that question, right, because obviously, like... When you're at the top of your top, right? Some people, there's two schools of thoughts. You laser fo you're laser focused on you, just your thing, or there's another school of thought whereby you can balance both of them. You can do the relationships and be at the top of your top. So how do you balance that? What's your thoughts about that? That's a great question. See, I, I, I'm a very much a relationship person, so I felt like they were distractions. What, the work? Oh, sorry, the relationships were distractions. Yeah, mm, okay. So um, I kind of just sort of threw myself into sport, really, mm. and just focused there. Um, and you do kind of, I didn't realise, like, I'm not inherently a selfish person, but you, you become very laser focused. Mm -hmm. And so if anything was going to take me off of that, it was like, sorry. Damn. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. selfish, though? 
Is that yes, self- it is, but it's, is it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Self-control? It's selfish, but it does. I don't think it's wrong. Yeah, because selfish means like it's, it's focused on you. So yeah, yeah self in it. It's selfish. Yeah, yeah. 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 but. Yeah. But the thing is, is, it, is that selfish or is that like, maybe I just peel about the pitters in it now? But is that selfish? <laughs> <laughs> is that selfish or you go to a relationship where you can't get it? You're all selfish. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to rationalise it. Do you see this? Selfish. Finish off. No, I was saying yeah. Go on, go on. yeah. I said, is it selfish? For you to focus on yourself because you can't give them your all, or is it selfish for you to be a relationship? No, wait, hold up. Let me start again. Is it <laughs> self? Tired, yeah, let me, let me start again. <laughs> is it selfish for you to be like, you know, I want to be focused on myself because I can't give you my all? Mm. Yeah, that's the question. Is that selfish? Do you know what it was? When I was in a relationship, I knew what I was bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. So if that energy wasn't matching, I felt like it was a little bit of a waste of a time of time. Yeah. Mm. So, and I don't want to kind of be distracted because I, I I am very much a loving person yeah so I I'm not I wasn't you know disrespectful or anything like that but it was not really it wasn't worth the risk yeah of what I was you know working towards and had been working towards mm. um how do people in the field obviously like athletics like not everyone had the same school of thought as like for example my like not myself but people who are a school of thought whereby laser focus no relationships how do people around you, do people around you have relationships too or they just focus simply just on athletics? I, I mean, I did have relationships, but I found like I was always really, oh, they should just be long distance. And I yeah. realized that was because <laughs> I wanted to be able to focus. But yeah. then also when you have such a long distance relation, you're not nurturing it mm-hmm. r- really and truly. It's hard to. Um, yeah. It's and so to, then, yeah. you know, what was the point? Yeah. <laughs> there are situations where long distance is called for, but I knew for me it was more of a, this just helps. Yeah. yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear so it. So for me, then I was like, yeah, why, why even bother with the distraction? Um, and also, I think with my faith as well, it was like it needed to lead to, you know, somewhere. Yeah. And yeah, people yeah. weren't always ready for that. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but no, there are lots of relationships that happen in sport. Often, you see, you know, their training partners or yes, you know, yes, coach athlete. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, wasn't that and just that getting that could be confusing. What that works in terms of coach athlete. It wouldn't work for me, but it works for. Wait, I said like the person who's coaching them is their partner. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite, quite a weird dynamic. You see that no, quite. A, I see, you see that gym. quite a lot. Yeah, uh, it's not necessarily their coach or their trainer, but it's maybe their man is helping them in the gym, like do their yeah, set or no. whatever. So like, it makes sense, but then this is at a professional level. That's why I think yeah, it's a bit weird. Yeah, you see some. I mean, it depends if you can work with your spouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Because they're not. So. They're not. It's like they're not really working. You're. They're training you, mm. so it's like a, it's, it's a completely that, different relationship, isn't it? Yeah, but that's that's their team. The that's, that's some yeah. people do that. They keep mm. it in house. It's like a family affair. Yeah, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. That makes so, sense. They're like Mary J. Yeah. Blige. Ah. Nah, it's true. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> but yeah, so, so 2007. Now we made the Olympic. We made the World Championships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, got we got we got the bronze there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I say we like I was there. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> we were all there. We were there. We were there. Spirit. We were there. Spirit, man. We were there. Spirit, man. So we got we got we got we got the bronze medal. Come on. And so that's always nice. You know, the year before an Olympics, you're in form. Yes. Uh, my 800 was going well as well. Um, so for me, every year, the the trials, the domestic trials is always my worst because it's like, if you don't get out of that, you're not going anywhere. 100%. So I just... You know, Context, was... guys. Can you explain that, please? The... Yeah. So to make a championship, yeah. you have to first go through trials, which is the national championships. Okay. Which usually falls about six weeks before you go out for the major championship that year. Okay. Um, and in the UK, you need to finish in the top two mm-hmm. and have the qualifying time. And then top you make two? The team. Yeah. And how many people go to these qualifiers? So, oh. Um, so typically for the 800, we could have anywhere between 45 and 60 entrance entries. Um, and kind of top and two. And so we have three rounds, yeah. And you have to finish in the top two with the qualifying time and then you make the team automatically and then there's like a discretionary place that they fill I'm so confused sorry is it top two per round or the top two in general no so you have to go through your heat yeah mm-hmm. semi yeah mm-hmm. then the final yeah and in that final yeah you have to finish in the top two. <laughs> oh wow so out of 60 people only two people actually make the world championships or then f- or three is- three people will make it but on the day of the, or the weekend the top two are automatically guaranteed with the time 
Um, and then there's like a third discretionary place which they will. Uh, that I don't the, know why they do. It. I like the American way. First three past the post. Mm-hmm. Simples. Like people know, you know, there and then. Yeah. Whereas you know, in the UK they like to do this kind of let's reserve a space for someone that doesn't turn up. Is that politics? <laughs> was that, was yeah, that, was that I was think it's politics very stuff? unnecessary. I can imagine. Because what happens is, um, the person that comes third, if they've got the time, they should go. Right. They should mm-hmm. go. But usually it gets filled with someone who didn't turn up. And they've been holding that space for them. Very interesting. So, like, for example, like you saying Bolt. Just exactly. Yeah, but I, Bolt would never do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just show up. Yeah. You know, but here, so for example, you probably see that with, like a Mo Farah, mm. he um, might not run, but because of his prestigiousness, they mm-hmm. would just reserve that place for him. That's mm. not fair, man. It's not fair. But life. It's life. So wait, yeah. a quick side. He met you saying Bolt before. Yeah. Well done. Uh, How's he yeah. like? Just humble. Yeah. From my like, country. Fun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just humble. Phenomenal athlete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, bit of a ladies' man. Oh, <laughs> Not yeah. anymore. He's a family man now. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, the Jamaican squad, I would hang out with them all the time. Shelly Ann Fraser Price, man. She's great. Uh, oh, she's amazing. Yeah. I heard man. about her. Oh, she's she's so dull. Yeah, she's 100 meter, man. She's amazing. She's mm. wonderful. Um, Fraser Price. Yeah. Uh, Hera. Yeah, no, I, 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 I love, I love athletics, yeah, man. Yeah, I love, really? I really do, oh, man. Like Shelley, yeah, she's great. Big, big up, up Shelley, Shelley, man. Big up Shelley, man. Have you Shelley seen this? Yeah, come, we are London. <laughs> come through, yeah, man. Mm. Come through, mom, superwoman. She's amazing. She's man. a mom as well. Yeah, she's yeah. amazing, man. I wish she even running for like governor in Jamaica or something like mm. that, bro. She's doing some stuff, doing some good stuff, man. Yeah. See, I, 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 I follow that properly, man. Mm. Like. I'm a big, I'm a big athletics fan. Yeah, I, I love excellence. Really. Yeah. I don't understand why until I speak about it now. I love seeing excellence Excellent. because yeah. we are people of excellence. Yes. Come on, and you guys are too. The fact you're watching this right now means you are people of excellence too. Like, it's not reason why. It's not. It's no coincidence that you're seeing us towards people mm-hmm. who are living lives of excellence. And you're watching it mm-hmm. because something in you is waking up to understand. Hold on, something about them which I like. And please, friends, I'm telling you right now, what you like in them, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it very simple for you. Is the excellence mm. you watching these clips because you like excellence? This is excellence right here. This is excellence, excellence right here. I'm not being, I'm not boasting. But I'm just saying to us that we are people who love excellence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, um, back to it now. Yes. Back, to, back off my my preaching. Mm. So, 2007, <laughs> that we made the we made the bronze, yes, which indeed. is amazing. Now we get funding. Two people made. You're one of two. Mm. That's favor, man. That's that's one thing. Two people out of sixty. We, now we make it to. So that was, that was the trial. That was qualifies for the World Championships. We get to the World Championships now. We then come, we come third. We get the bronze medal, mm-hmm. and then so after that, that's where you get the funding. Mm-hmm. Life changes. I'm assuming changes again, right? Yeah, I guess it meant that I could, you know, pursue that sort of lifestyle where I could just train, mm-hmm. um, which makes a big difference. You know, when you want to go for a camp for six weeks, you can do that. You have the liberty to do that. I could recover better. You start attracting sponsorship. Yes. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I guess you know, that's the, what everyone's aspiring to live in the dream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, two Oh wow. So, I don't know how. I don't know how many years it was from ten years old to two thousand seven. So now we're able finally to able to just take it seriously. Mm-hmm. How many years did that take you then? Plus fifteen years. About yeah. yeah. Wow, bro, are you deep in that. Well, mm-hmm. two thousand eight. I was twenty four. So. Yeah. So what, it took you fifteen years to turn your dream into a full time reality. People give up after two point five days. It's <laughs> real life. Two point five days. Two point five days. One day doesn't work out. Two days doesn't work out. Three mm. days. No, three days. Two and a half days. Mm. I'm done. It took you fifteen years. Yeah, I mean that's a lesson in itself, man. Perseverance. That's a lesson in itself. Patience, mm. perseverance, hard work. Yeah, I think you know, especially wow. with this generation and society hasn't helped, but yeah. they just want everything like that. Microwave generation. Like, Microwave generation. Literally. Yeah. That's not how how it works. And guess what? Know? Food tastes better when it comes out of the oven. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Exactly. Or even on the stove. Yeah. Matter of <laughs> fact, which will take even longer. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, just letting everything marinate and actually That's fall good. where it needs to fall. Mm. Yeah. As well, and anything that happens too quickly, it's it's not gonna last. Mm-hmm. They just aren't correct. Yeah. Wow. So what you said that you were able to finally be fully pledged into athletics in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. Were you balancing other things at the same time then? Like work, were you still working at the same time? I don't think. Back in those times, there, 2007. So I deferred my dissertation a year. Mm-hmm. So I f- actually graduated in 2007. Mm. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Many moons ago. <laughs> um, but no, I literally went into, I came back to London. 
a change coaching group and I got a sponsorship deal with Adidas. Mm -hmm. That's so amazing. So I was actually able to just train full time. Yeah. That's, a, that's amazing, you know. I remember doing my driving test and then I passed my driving test mm -hmm. and then I needed to get insurance and yeah. they were so expensive. So then I managed to get a sponsor. Aviva sponsored me. <laughs> Aviva sponsored you? Yeah. I was wow. like, wow, is this athlete life? I like wow. it. All. I like it. Yeah. So yeah, life changed. Um, I'm understanding, I'm understanding the cliff more and more now. Yeah. Because the posts are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Let's say your show is paid for. Yeah. This is coming up the mountain. This is, yeah, this is coming up the mountain. Up, up, You're yeah. finding little things along the journey. Yeah. Gosh. And then, okay, so, sorry, were you going to say something? No. Okay, I'm thinking now between that period or like even 2006 and 2008, what was happening? What are the, what are the key switches? What, what happened in that period of time? Because a lot must have happened before that, the Olympics. So obviously, mm. like, you change, like, lifestyle changes mm. i was no longer studying or just doing my dissertation which was um gave me a bit more room mm. um moved back to london um i guess i trained a bit more mm -hmm. but more intentional and more structured mm. um which always helps yeah. i had i was around that elite environment so lee valley was just dying out as the the hub getting ready for 2012 so I came back and I was living. What is, what's Lee Valley? Sorry, Lee Valley is the training center it's like in Olympic Edmonton. Park. It's like Olympic Park. Yeah, is it an Olympic Park? Or am I thinking mm, about somewhere else? It's not as 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 prestigious. <laughs> was it? It's in Edmonton. Where am the I thinking nine. of then? I'm thinking of the um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of you know that that red the red spirally That's thing. That's Olympic Park. That's yeah, Olympic Park. Yeah. Is that around the corner from Lee Valley? Twenty-ish mm, minutes. Twenty-ish minutes. That's okay. London, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, you're, talk you're talking about North. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so yeah. Lee Valley was kind of the hub and, you know, where all the athletes were put to train mm. to get ready for London. Um, so obviously that was still getting built. Um, but a lot of us, it became a hub. So there was a hub in London, there was a hub in Birmingham and then Loughborough. Mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah, so okay. all the sprinters were basically <laughs> in London. No. Um, so yeah, I moved around there and just started to... Yeah, just be intentional and just, mm. you know, focus on making it to the Olympics. So you were in the right environment this mm. time. Mm. That's powerful. Mm. That's yeah. a powerful thing right there. So you're telling me when you were, what well you said that was a great question, bro. So between 2006 and 2008, mm -hmm. when you would finish your degree or were finishing your degree, the number one thing would help you get to where you had to get to was you being in the right environment. 100%. That I is think powerful. whatever you're trying to do, you yeah. have to be in the right environment. Wow. Mm. Um, and you you got out of your comfort zone to go and find it too, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't like it wasn't mm -hmm. like it wasn't like outside the world, but it's not where you were born. You you had to go to North London. Obviously, it's, not, it's a journey, but you still did it. That just shows the perseverance of your character. Yes, people, I have made a group, a community for people. I say people, but it's go-getters, entrepreneurs, people who want to improve their lives. Probably some of you guys as well might be interested. It's called The Round Table. And essentially in this group, I will be getting together a whole load of people who will have the same vision and they're about the same stuff. I'm just going to be sharing as much value, resources, um, to, I don't know, links to podcasts, to, to, to videos that I've seen, to books that I've read, anything that's helped me on my journey and helped my people on their journey. I'll be dropping in this chat. So if you're interested, go to the description below or whatever there is, it will be somewhere. Click on that link and join the chat. Trust me, you will love it. Quick one, people. So I'm taking event bookings now to speak at events. For the last few months now, I've been speaking at universities and some schools, places such as UCL Warwick, right? But now I'm officially taking event bookings. So you want someone to speak to you guys about or speak to your people about confidence, imposter syndrome, and the art of improving public speaking. I'm the guy for you. So contact me on the coach Klutze, Robert Klutze, and I'll be there for you. I think one thing with me, I will always go wherever I need to be. That's amazing. To achieve what I'm trying to achieve. That's amazing, man. Um, and I think, you know, that's why I talk so much about champion mindset. I don't think it's, it's not specific to athletes. Yeah. It's literally being willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And sometimes what it takes is not fun. It's not comfortable. Yeah. But it's worth it. That's so. it. That's it. And look what's got you. Mm. A the bronze, Olympics. bronze That'll medal. And let's go there. <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's, yes, go, let's there. go. That's a lovely pivot, it's man. Not, it's not as linear as everyone's thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> explain yeah. the process. Explain the process. How so, was it? 2008. Yeah. Top of my game. I had a wicked 
Obviously, like, you smile so much so far, what? man. <laughs> I love 2008. 2008. Yeah. Let's not talk about 2012 because then you'll start bringing tears oh, up. Gosh. But 2008 yes. was a glorious year. It yeah. was like how an Olympic year should go. Wow. In form, ran a PB, Crystal Palace, big up Crystal Palace Grand Prix. Oh. Um, so that was like our send off race. Yeah. So after nationals, there's usually a, a Grand Prix, and then everyone from across the world that's going to the Olympics will be there. Oh, wow. Everyone was there in Palace. Yeah, Bolt was there. Everyone not- was there. What? In Palace, down the road. In Palace was the That's, so That's nuts. That's how my PB to this day was run. No oh, wow. way. Yeah, I was really upset we don't use it anymore, but I think they're refurbishing it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So yeah, then we, they had a bus drive us around the track in the bus. Like, we're going to the Olympics. Wow. So it was up. great. It was everything your first Olympics, you know. That's yeah. what every athlete is trying to get to. Um. I had a great first round, you know, again, I met Matola in my heat. And I was like, I've got to beat you this time, lovely. You're mm. old lady now. Move over. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't make the final, which was really gutting because mm. I actually really thought I could make the final that time. But I was running against a lot of really tough characters. Which, what's, the four, what's the 400 meters, this one here? It's 800. It's 800 yeah, meters you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, and so, you know, my generation was marred with a lot of drugs in mm. sport mm. and also the, the the situation with dsd athletes i don't know if What's you're familiar that? with that Mm-mm. um so mm. they have substantially high levels of testosterone okay right so um and unfortunately you know if at birth you're born with both yeah you know we you know if, the, if your parents decide that they want to have a female then that's you know what happens so for example casa semenya yes. came under that scrutiny. yeah 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 um i don't agree with how it happened but mm. um because i think she could have been pre- protected by her federation a bit better which federation but is she again south africa yes yeah, yeah. so well, we had we've had quite a few of those characters come through mm-hmm. i think for me people always ask you know how do you feel racing against them you know, if they've managed to get that far, then mm. I just think, okay, well, let me hang on to their coattails and yeah. see what I can do. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it shouldn't get to that point and then publicly disgrace them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we had a tough era. Like, mm. the times we would see then, you know, were f- phenomenal. Like, it was really frustrating for me towards the latter part of my career because the times I would churn out all the time were winning a lot because it was cleaner, a bit fairer. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you do what you can in the moment. But, mm-hmm. you know, Beijing was awesome nonetheless. Um, the relay, um, obviously, off the back of the bronze from the world, we were expecting the same thing, right? Yeah. But we didn't actually finish third on the day. Mm-hmm. We finished fifth. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we knew. <laughs> we knew this weren't right, but how do you say anything without sounding sour grapes? So, yeah. um the Russians were always, you know, suspect. <laughs> mm. um, but also the Belarusians. And we were like, okay, where did you guys come from? The Belarusians? Exactly. What's that? Belarus. Who are they? Oh, Belarus, yeah. yeah. Belarus, oh, were they there too? Yeah. So they came forth. So they came, why they, is it two? For separate countries? Separate, yeah. Belarus oh. and Russia. I thought Belarus was Russia. <laughs> no, no, no. Separate, separate countries. Or was it in Russia, sorry? I think it was before, think beforehand. Separated. Back in the... Um, Oh, what USSR kind of situation? Yeah, yeah, back Please, then. I don't know my geography like that. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but I think back then it was part of the block. Okay, but that was the block. Was, yeah, but now it's Eastern <laughs> yeah. Block. Eastern Block. Yeah. Eastern yeah. Block, back in the day. So, like Yugoslavia, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, like, yeah. Yeah. so Russia and Belarus came fourth, fourth, third, um, third and fourth, or whatever. Russia were third and Belarus were fourth. God, I've never heard of Belarus being a big nation when I've seen athletics. those girls in my life Belarus always um, respectfully big up the Belarusians <laughs> yeah. big, big, up, big up the Belarusians I don't, is that how you say it big, the Belarusians 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 big up you yeah. but I've never seen like <laughs> not big Belar- up they're not I, taking drugs oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, that. No, yeah not that situation there <laughs> boo <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah it's frustrating yeah. but you know that's the way of sport mm. um and then 10 years later they get busted oh, <laughs> oh so to keep, so you Oh wow! Uh, so you left. Um, you left two thousand eight, thinking, right? I've not done what I need to do. Yeah, I've literally, literally, I felt the, I felt the best of the best. And if you, if you were to say anything, as you said, sour grapes, yeah. you'd be like, oh, just, oh, yeah, you didn't win, so you're saying this. Yeah. So in between that time, obviously, the Russian, the whole Russian Federation has been banned. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because it's just been oh. systemic doping. Like, what they've been banned? They're still banned now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was, it was very obvious, but at the same time, yeah, there's a lot of money that's changing hands. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there was a whistleblower, so that was a big deal. Um, yeah. She was actually in my event. My event was notorious for um, them cheating. My actually, event? Got, my event, 800. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've actually had three medals given back to me in retrospect. Yeah. <laughs> That is crazy. <laughs> over time, so you're you're thinking like, oh, Listen, oh well, better more, like next more time. More medals might start coming. Like, goodness, really? Goodness. Yeah, as and when. Mm-hmm. Oh, so they're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me give you this. Yeah, it's but happen. the wow. thing is, you know, to say anything at the time, yeah, 2011, um, in Paris, you got a silver there. I got a bronze. You got a bronze yeah. there. Okay. But I mean, I didn't leave with anything. I just, you know, thought, oh, I had my <laughs> my butt handed to me. But again, they were on drugs. Um, yeah. Why? That's the thing. Like, I want to talk about that mm. because it's frustrating because there's so many stolen moments. It's not just about so standing many. on the podium. It's you know your contracts. You know, for me in 2011, my contract was up. You know, everything's hindering hindering on that performance. And yeah. then you come away and you're like, I literally did everything I could do. Yeah. But, you know, if it was like another nation, you'd mm. be like, okay, they just had a better day. But you know other stuff's going on. Yeah. So it was Question, very yeah. frustrating. Do you reckon mm. if you got the medal that day, you would have been at the 2012 Olympics? Ooh, that's a, that's that's a deep a good question. question. Deep question, man. Do you reckon you would have been there? No, because no? I think what happened in 2012 was literally me against one man. And he just didn't want me to run. As in your coach? Uh, so he was like the head coach. Mm. Um, so <laughs> everyone can go Google us because I'm tired of talking about it. But yeah, it was a bit of a personal vendetta. You mm-hmm. know, I'll hold my hands up. I had a bad trials. Yeah. But, you know, so did a lot of people that still ended up going. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day, I was the only person with a qualifying time. Mm. Um, but for some reason, you didn't get to go through. I didn't go because he didn't want me to go. Mm. Damn! I can't, like I was, sugar, I was trying to sugarcoat. There is no other way to put it. He literally didn't want me to go. Mm. Um, I'm someone that will stand up for myself. I'm yeah. someone that stood up to him to defend mm-hmm. myself. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I don't regret it. Like it did really. It took a lot. I didn't actually realize how much I was harboring because of that, because there was so much on 2012. I still went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can't explain it. I don't know if it was worse going and just knowing that you can't step on the track. Mm. Oh, so you just attended to watch, but you can't... I don't know what I went for, really. I was selected because literally, I think if they didn't select me, I would have been able to suit them. (laughs) Oh, so you still went to Olympic Games? I still went. I was selected for the 4x4. Okay. But even though I was still one of the fastest, I wasn't going to run because he didn't want me to run. Wow. So so what were you doing there then? I was there to pray with people. (laughs) Wow. I was just there... It was just there. Support. It was very weird. Mm. Can't explain. I was a relay, like reserve, in the end. Um, oh, so you're like you're like um. So you actually so you're part of a team. I was part of the squad. But you're like the fifth person rather than the fourth. So there's four of them. You're like the fifth. They or just decide on the day. So we don't. You don't really know. Like I, I could have run mm. if, you, if if I was in shape. My time was fast enough to run. But That's I was crazy. told by a coach you're not going to run. So before we even left. So. And then now you're putting things in place so that stuff like that doesn't happen. That's my plan. Mm. One, you have to talk about it. You have to expose it. Mm-hmm. Because people don't actually realise it's happening. I yeah. didn't realise it was happening. No. Well, I mean, I could, I could guess because <laughs> the world is not a nice place, mm-hmm. as we know a lot mm. p- a lot of parts of it. Mm-hmm. But then I didn't know that this is like... like This is the stuff you see in movies, isn't it? <laughs> like, you're not honest. Real life. <laughs> so true. Real life. Like, you see it in movies. Yeah. Like, you don't want me to win. Yeah, I'm going to win so anyway. True. But, it's like, so this, is, this is real life and things that yeah. people are actually dealing with. Yeah. And I really do so respect true. you for, you know, actually fighting back and fighting that power. I appreciate you. Like, it was at the time, everyone's like, oh, just, just shut up. Just, mm, yeah, suck you're crazy. Up. And I was like, I actually can't. Yeah. I just can't. This yeah. is not right. Um, and, you know, for me, like, I don't know. I've just got that. I just need justice. Like, I always yeah. fight for it. And, you know, he's gone on to another country and, you know, athletes from there reach out you know based off my story like the same things happening to them and so that helps me realize okay i wasn't just crazy yeah. <laughs> i wasn't overreacting i wasn't yeah. over emotional but um you know at the end of the day what's done in the darkness will always come to light that's so, it mm-hmm. always always yeah if that was what ha- had to happen then it was it, i wouldn't change it mm-hmm. that's that's really really powerful and as you said to what, what happens to the dark will always come to light he feels like he can take away take away people's careers because mm. 2012 was a big it was a home olympics Listen. Right, but you yeah. feel that you took away that glory away, that glory away from you. But mm. look, what you're doing now. You're gonna put things into place. So the next Marilyn, 
the next Jessica mm-hmm. will not go through the same process again. And I think that's exactly. so much more powerful. Mm-hmm. I think that's so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like what what he thought will be the end of you. It's actually the start of you. Mm. And I was, as bro said, Literally. rightfully, you're that parachute now for the next generation. That, you're that man. bridge, so which much. is so vital. And the thing is, you've got, there's other people doing the same thing that he's doing. Yeah. But then people might not be sharing their story mm-hmm. because they might not think that, you know, that this is this is not normal. Like, yeah. they might think that that's their normal, isn't it? Yeah. That like, this is what's supposed to happen. Yeah. As mad as it sounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then now, because, you, you know, you're making a change, that can be different yeah. in the future. Yeah. And you've got to exactly. make that change. Exactly. That's so good, man. That is the mission. So, I was just rounding up now. 2008, late, 10 years later, mm. we get the bronze medal. Well done, by the way. That's mm. amazing. <laughs> Come Thank on. Oh, you. we clap for that stuff. Yeah, and we clap drop as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Mic drop. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> drop, mic drop <laughs> clap. Anything. So, 2008, we get the Olympics. We get the Olympic and um, bronze medal, which is amazing. 2011, we get the bronze again. Mm. But both of these situations, you they came post-mortis. Because you didn't get them at the time. You got them after the scandals came out right mm-hmm. so obviously how are you feeling because obviously you're thinking right I've bombed like, I've not done what I need to do were you feeling down were you feeling good like how do you deal with that I think I wasn't so down after the Olympics because it was like okay it's my first one we'll bounce yeah, back we'll yeah. bounce back it's just you know let's push harder yeah Paris I was disappointed I was expecting more 2011 um, this is 2011 yeah. Paris yeah and it was quite a pivotal time I kind of needed to do well mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of like oh, you start to feel like, what else can I do? Like, yeah. push, <laughs> work yeah. harder. Um, and that's, I think, where, you know, having a good sounding board in a coach is important because all we want to do is push. Yeah. And they actually need to know when to pull you back as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it was it was pretty rough because obviously my contract was being negotiated and I didn't really have any anything to show for it like yeah. you know they're very cutthroat with those things and mm. um, they did keep me on so it wasn't like terrible but it was just going into the next season like just constantly just pushing the body and i think that's when my body started to really pay for it mm. that over overwork over compensation mm. essentially i was trying to keep up with people that were taking drugs wow. so that's a, a losing battle athlete, as well that's a losing battle man. yeah and you know as a clean athlete that's just yeah like you said, a losing battle um, well, when you said trying to keep up with them, was it because you were just trying to keep up to their pace, but you couldn't naturally because they weren't being natural themselves? Is that what you mean by natural, that? It's not natural. Like, it's performance enhancing. So, essentially, they're able to train harder. They're able to train longer. They're, you know... it's I, I don't know the process of taking drugs. I know it's not also, it's also not nice on the body. Mm-hmm. But... Side effects. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and especially long term. But it was just unrealistic, mm-hmm. you know? That's what I mean about the idolization of it all, man, because... I mean, you don't the, know what people are willing to do. That's the thing. Obviously, mm-hmm. like, like you read a joke about earlier when people just run around in circles. <laughs> but if you really break it down. It's like if we just run around in circles. Why are you trying to cheat to win? I like, just win. <laughs> just win naturally. Obviously, it's easier said than done. Mm. I understand that, but it's like it's big it, business. It hurts me when people cheat to win because mm. it hurts me so much. Like I get frustrated when I see that. You know, yeah. why are you cutting corners for? It's big business. It's big pressure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you must know Dwayne Chambers. Like, yeah, yeah, he got he got banned, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know Dwayne um, Chambers. Yeah, he got he got <laughs> banned. Uh, was even that guy for America? Oh. The Americans always getting banned. Mm-hmm. What's his name? What's <laughs> his name? Get banned come back. What's his name? Mind. What's his name? Um, Tyson Gay. Oh, did he get banned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got nice. bad too. What about the other one? He's really cocky. I can't remember his name. Everyone now. dropping like flies. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious! And he just would come back. To, uh, not Tyson Gay. Um, it was American. Yeah, he was oh. literally running till he was like forty. Oh, till he was forty, so no one <laughs> wanted to say it. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> no, nah, he was good. Oh, what's his? Oh, name? I forgot his you name. I, mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> he literally was serve a band for some cream. Yeah, and then yeah. come cream. back. He didn't care. Serve another band, come back. I don't even he know why. Care. I can't remember his name. Oh, I can, right. I, can, I can picture his face too. It's a shame as well because these people have talent at the start. Like you have to have some sort Indeed. of talent to, you know, get yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But then they just have to push it even further. And mm-hmm. as you said, what's the what's dark? Who actually what's done in the dark will actually come to light. That's it. Always. And it always happened that way. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And then what you've been doing in the dark in terms of working on what you're actually putting out there now mm-hmm. is coming to light. And exactly. we're trying to bring some more light to it. You know what I mean? That's and tell it. us a little yes. bit more about what you do. Because obviously, as Rob said, we're wrapping it up. But yeah. Yeah. we want to hear a little bit about what yeah. you're doing right now. So I retired and I was like, okay, let me try the corporate world. Mm. So I um, transitioned into a role in talent acquisition, nice. HR essentially. 
Um, so I get to work with fantastic new to career talent. Nice. Um, I lead the program for a tech company called Equinix. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of a lot of my mentoring and coaching skills I get to use. Nice. Um, and also recruiting. Um, athletes always get told you'd be good at sales or recruitment. I didn't want to do either. Mm. Why sales? <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a good question. The competitiveness, the targets, the oh, you know yeah. relationships, talking to people, yeah. working. Um, but yeah, no. So <laughs> essentially, I feel like I do a bit of both. Mm. Um, recruitment, I was like, okay, this is okay, mm -hmm. but it needs to be purpose driven. Yeah. Right. So hey, I you're in the right place right now. <laughs> I immediately jumped into sort of the DIB efforts. Um, What's so DIB? Diversity, inclusion, and belonging. Okay. okay which, you know, every company I feel like is throwing that out now and trying yeah. to bring in black heritage talent, Latinx. Um, so, yeah, I was like, you know, they didn't want to include that in EMEA. I was like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think that's what it takes. It takes someone who, who who's passionate and is going to look for the right opportunities and extend that to those that need it. So mm. um, it's the third year of the program, really enjoying kind of bringing in diverse talent into the company also bringing in athletes into the company mm. um, we have an athlete career transition program so really trying to champion that and really do a lot of education within the business as well okay yeah you get excited you hear about you know medalists or not medalists coming in athletes coming in but do you actually really know what it means to bring on an athlete mm. are you going to be patient are you actually going to give them that learning grace mm -hmm. um, because yes i feel like i learned a lot on my sort of natural ability to adapt but you know sometimes when you show your aptitude people just think okay you've got it but there is actually a lot of business acumen that i didn't have mm. but thankfully my hiring hiring manager was very patient and she just really championed me so that's kind of a real reason why i stayed to be honest because nice. one thing about me if i'm not enjoying something i will cut <laughs> yeah. 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 that's the thing about athletes as well you're always gonna <laughs> there's that <laughs> and also you've shown that you can do something to a really, really high level mm. because you've kept pushing. Yeah. So if someone does give you that patience, then that is just the kind of go-ahead for you yeah. to just continue going and continue pushing and really being yeah. excellent. As yeah. Rob said, it's about excellence with excellent, you guys yeah. and really being excellent at what you do. Absolutely. And you're also on boards as well. Uh, yes, yeah. I am. Plural. So. <laughs> Plural, not <laughs> one. Yeah. Not singular. Yeah, so UK Athletics board mm. um, as well as the England board um, and also another passion. I am also on a board for... Um, the Fly Anyway Foundation, which supports uh, survivors of domestic abuse and helps wow. them set up their business. Mm. Um, so that is set up by my speaker coach, Danny Wallace. We got Danny Wallace. Yeah, yeah she's Wallace, amazing. Um, so yeah, that's a incredible. That's amazing, man. That's that's all you know, purpose stuff, you yeah. know. Wow. So, um, I'm also purpose, a huge sort of champion for women in sport. Yeah. Um, and so just anywhere I can kind of you know obviously women in sport is on the rise but yes. there's still so much iniquity yeah, <laughs> that's going yeah. on um which for me being a black woman in sport you know i was not supposed to get to the the echelons that i did but wow. it's all about just breaking those ce ceilings mm. those glass ceilings yes. and mm. representation really matters and yep. that's all i try and be I like how you said. I like how yeah. you said glass ceilings because yeah. everyone says ceilings, yeah. but realistically they're actually glass. glass. Like you can actually break through them. Yeah, punch absolutely. through, man. Absolutely, I had to. Those ceilings have to be yeah. your your the goal for what you have to do right now, and that's for all of us right now. Yeah, yeah to make our glass ceilings, our children's and next generations' floors. That's the goal. I love that. Mm. Yeah. That's the goal. If our ceilings yeah. are their ceilings, what have we done? Mm -hmm. And I feel like what you're doing, as Bro said once again, go back to it. The parachute. You'll be you be the parachute. Is you not only metaphorically physically showcasing to them that look my my floor my my ceiling how i ended doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be the same way you did mm. and that's the best thing about mentors people who come before yeah. you to tell you boom i've been through this but yeah. guess what it have to be like that for you and that's why i wasn't satisfied when you know my peers before like were saying oh we went through it get on with it kind of thing that's not that's not as meant to be mm -hmm. it's not no, meant to be at all so. so right now you say you're working in, you're working in tech you're, you're working in tech but in particular, being part of the, the diversity um, part of, of the mm -hmm. company, to help people come into the company who are from diverse backgrounds and also yeah. athletes. Yeah. As well as that too, you're part of the board members for Athletics Champion and Change. That and England as well. And England too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like to sum up your whole story, like for me, this is a story about someone who has fought the fought the fought the fought. Fought the fight. Fought the fight. Yeah won the fight mm. fought the good race right mm -hmm. or yeah fought the good race 
and at the end of it all, against all odds, has come out on top. Like, as you said, you don't think when you started at district and national or when you're doing lacrosse, you'd be where you are now. <laughs> look from lacrosse to this. You know what I'm saying? But it just, <laughs> for me, yeah, it just... Wait, can, you, can you still lacrosse it up? <laughs> what? I've still got my first stick. Come on, really? Really? Say swear. <laughs> <laughs> we even had Have the remote. Yeah, 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 the white one. Have you seen a wooden one? I've seen wooden ones, innit? I don't think they exist anymore. But I've seen them in museums. Kind of thing. I ain't held one in my life. <laughs> but yeah, nah. I was saying, like, for me, what what you what you reinforce is the whole idea of long suffering and patience mm. and endurance, and that is so so important because, as you said, as John said, we live in a society today whereby we live in a microwave society. People mm. just want to get things so fast. But your story, being not even looked at, to now come to prevalence, reinforced to me the pause of just turning up, yeah. all weathers, not making excuses, just turning up. Because you never know what you could do by turning up. There were yeah. sixty people there. You got you got to number two. You got to the the first two. You got top two. They said to you in two thousand and seven, two thousand and six, that um you were um, you come forty seventh. You yeah, came yeah. third. Was that two thousand and six? Mm-hmm. Right. All these things you're fighting against the people who think no, you shouldn't do it, but you did it. Your story is a story of fighting the good fight against all odds. And I don't know about you. Mm. I don't know about the people behind the camera, but I relate to that. And I want you guys to sit on that, meditate that, and actually reflect on it because. I don't, it doesn't matter what people say about you. What matters is what you believe in yourself. Mm. Sit down, do your goals, dream big, don't dream small. Get out of that box, live in reality. Continue to fight that good fight. Continue to put the 1% in every single day. Mm-hmm. And you can end up, no, 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 maybe not necessarily being a bronze medal, mm. but you could be. Olympic. Olympic bronze medal. Olympic. That's what I add. <laughs> not me. But you could, be the, you could be the Olympian of your own life. Mm. Just sit on that one. But as we always do before we like to end, let's ask the audience the guest sorry a very important question oh. do you ask the first question so ask the last one yeah okay. <laughs> are you happy with where you are in your life right now i have peace okay i have peace i'm yeah. not satisfied There's yeah one of the things that when you kind of dedicate your life to something like this you're not on par with your peers i guess or where society should yeah true say so you know of course like I had to transfer that mindset of like the comparison games out of here and mm. things are going to be on God's timeline for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely, I'm at peace. I yeah. think that was something that I really craved and was like paramount, paramount for me. Mm. Um, and I think just that ability to kind of be okay with wherever you're at. Yeah. Um, and I definitely attribute that to my faith because, yeah. you know, I was fueled by no a lot throughout my career. And then when that ended, I was like, okay, my identity is no longer that. <laughs> mm. um, so I know like, you know, a lot of acceleration has happened already. And I know, you know, all the things that my desires, God knows them and he's going to bring them to pass in his timing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely like, just to think how quickly things have turned around. Mm. Um yeah, I, I I guess yeah. I think happy I never use because it's just so temperamental. Yes, but I definitely have peace. Yeah, um, no, I love and that. I choose joy. I, I've heard I've heard people use joy instead of happiness because yeah. like, I can't remember what the difference was in it. But I just I like when people say joy. I saw I saw um, a quote that was not a quote actually like um, the breakdown of the word happy. You know, every single word derives from something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So etymology. If, Etymology that mm. word used last time, bro. It was beautiful. Mm. Etymology so of the word. Eloquent. Yeah, he's so eloquent, man. <laughs> Thank you. The the etymology of the word um, happiness comes from the word or derived from the word happens, mm. which is a present tense thing. Yeah. So when people feel happy, they feel happy in the moment. It's, in a, the, it's moment. A, the present yeah. thing. But as you said rightfully, you're not seeking happiness, you're seeking joy. Yeah. Joy is a long lasting forever yes. type of thing. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. What? Yeah, Where'd you get that from? On fire today. Bro, I've been what? I've been reading a lot more these days. So I'm, yeah, it's yeah it's just like things which come to my mind and I think it's important for us to continue to read mm. because you need to expand your mind. Mm. So yeah. I've been reading it and I saw that I was like, well, yeah, she probably didn't know that you, you look surprised. <laughs> yeah. But it's the it derived from the word yeah. happens. Like happiness comes from the word happiness. Yeah. So happiness comes from what happens. happens. Yeah. So of course we of course you feel happy at the moment when you win a million pounds and then mm. you're happy the next <laughs> moment. Or a thousand yeah. pounds. Yeah. yeah, big, big up, big up the people you know exactly who you are, yeah, man. Yeah. But of course, you feel happy at the moment when you win a thousand pounds, one million pounds, because yeah. it's happened. Yeah. But then the next day, you feel sad. Why is that? Yeah. Because happiness is fleeting. Mm. Or oh, you're jo- back to exactly. normal. Or oh, you're back to normal. Yeah. But joy, <laughs> through all seasons, is joy and that's peace. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, no, man, man. <laughs> but guys, 
Guys, I don't want you guys to uh, sleep on that one too. Mm, watch it twice if you Watch it to. twice, man. Don't don't <laughs> seek happiness, seek joy, seek peace. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But guys, have an amazing day. I've enjoyed this episode heavily. It, yes. How you find it? How you find it, bro? I've loved to be here. How have you found it? Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming Come on. on. It's been amazing. Here, but guys, tap in. Send to your peoples. Mm. If you haven't already, you've got to end this episode right now. If you haven't on audio, give us a five star. What earth are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what honestly, are you what, even doing? What, what, what thank you. Thank what on earth are you doing? You see the way I even emphasize the word are you doing? <laughs> what <laughs> earth are you doing? Nice speaker. <laughs> tonality. <laughs> what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Um, look, my last my tonality, exactly. Yeah. But guys. <sighs> Have an amazing day. Share with your peoples mm-hmm. and continue to live your life, your Olympic life. Have an amazing day. See you soon. And live it the purpose led way. All right. Love How did that. you find it? Loved it. Amazing. You guys are so good. Thank, Thank you so much. It's a wrap. That was so, so fun, man.